Hey, it's Beth here. Okay, I'm not sure what episode it is, but I found this page about Irma Bombeck, and I'll never find it again, so I can't do anything else. Okay, so it's like 5, 17 or 18 or something. That girl, Taylor Tomlinson, that comedian that's going to start her new late night show, I think tonight. Cute kid, 30 years old, very uplifting comedian. She's sweet. She likes life. She sees the problems, but she's, she's lovely. And I was up last night thinking, who does she remind me of from way, way back? Because comedians are so hard now and angry and she reminds me of Irma Bombeck and she doesn't have children yet and she is talking about dating but she does it with she's self-deprecating she's sweet anyway it reminded me of Irma so I went looking looking back through history for Irma Bombeck stories and I loved her in the 70s and 80s in fact I wrote her a letter because her first child was adopted and she kept saying things like, oh, my daughter says you're not my mother and gives me all kinds of grief. And I wrote her and I said, could you talk about the other side of it? You know, the wonder of it, the beauty of it. And I actually did do this. And I sent a little picture of me and my family when the boys were like five and three and we were all dressed up for Halloween. And she wrote me back. She actually wrote me back and she said, look, I'm really busy. Why don't you do it? <laughs> well, I never did. But anyway, I should have saved that letter. I think I do have it somewhere. Well, in a book, I probably had to get rid of when we moved to a smaller house. But anyway, Irma's Irma. She used to be on TV on Good Morning America. One time she was on with Cheryl Teagues. That's how old I am. And they went shopping together for um, glamorous clothes for an event they had to go to. And it was hilarious because they would put on the same outfit. And on Cheryl, it looked great. And she'd be like, oh God, look how fat I look. Oh, I can't stand the back. And Irma would look like Irma, who looks like everyone else, actually looks like an Irma. And um, she'd be like, oh my God, look at me. I'm fabulous. <laughs> she bought all the clothes. Cheryl couldn't find anything. That's the kind of person she was. She was just fun. One time, my favorite story, because I read all her books, like, um, you know, the grass is always greener over the septic tank, and if life is a bowl of cherries, what am I doing in the pits? She was so funny. But my greatest story was one time her husband came home from work, and she had three little kids, and said, um, we have to go to a dinner party, business dinner party. Irma was like, oh my God. She hadn't been out of the house in a month. And so she called up her mother. Her mother came over to babysit while she went shopping. She bought a dress. She bought Time Magazine, the newspaper, everything, the Wall Street Journal, everything she could get her hands on. The dinner was that night. So she read all the, all the papers. Her mother babysat for like 10 hours, got her hair done, did her nails, was ready to go. Husband comes home, picks her up. He goes, wow, you look great. She's, she starts talking to him about the stock market. He likes, oh my God, Irma, thank you. They get in the car. She's ready for this. He's like, Irma, you're helping my career. This means the world to me. She's like, I know, and it's going to be great. They get there. The president of the company was so dazzled by her that they sat next to each other at the dinner. Bill, Irma's husband, was almost in tears. They were getting along like peas and carrots. Everything's going great. The soup, fabulous. She knows how to use the spoon. You use the spoon and you push away from the soup. She read all of this. While she was getting dressed, she was looking into etiquette. I mean, she did it. Amy Vanderbilt, she went crazy. She did it all. Everything's going great. The meal, second course shows up. It's at this man's house. He has a grand house. Butler, everything is beautiful. Silver, unbelievable. China, unbelievable. Waterford crystal, crazy. She's not drinking too much. She's not doing anything wrong. There's the only person the president is talking to is her. She finally looks over at her husband and he's shaking his head. No, no, no. 
She looks at the president and he's shaking his head, no. And she looks down and the president says, you know what, Irma? I can cut my own meat. <laughs> she had been cutting his meat while he was talking on his plate. <laughs> I mean, that's, that's a good story. So here are some of her greatest quotes. One is, she doesn't want to play as, as any sport where there's an ambulance <laughs> on the sideline, which I think is very good advice. She'll never go to a doctor that has dead plants in the waiting room. She, she also, she also has been working out with people who are so thin that buzzards follow them to the, to the car. She has lost, she lost 750 pounds over 20 years. She said she should have been on a charm bracelet. She gained it back quicker than she lost it, always, every single time. She thinks car designers have got to figure out a car that lasts longer than the car payments. She said that there is no Hers was a onion ring. Mine was a French fry in my car. But she said that it doesn't improve the flavor to be stuck in the cushions for over two years. In my particular instance, mine was in a Suburban that I was driving for years, where every time you open the car, balls fell out, clothes fell out, dogs fell out. There was a French fry from McDonald's that had been stuck between the cushions and it was still soft and it was still warm. So French fries are different than onion rings. I get it. But, oh, she did, she did love the National Geographic because she'd pick it up every now and then just to be grateful that in her society, people wore clothes. Now I went to my library when I was in fifth grade. This is another reason, another thing I couldn't confess. I, to the priest at confessional, but I didn't think it was as bad as looking at Bobby Russell's penis, but it was bad that I looked at the pictures of the African women in their little villages with no tops on. And I will fully admit it. And I can't take it back. She also says that a woman shouldn't have more children than she has car windows. And she also said that Never order food in excess of your body weight, which I have lived by that one. And I, I feel that that one is, that's one I can handle all the time. She also said that housework, if you do it correctly, will kill you. And I believe that's true. She's so funny, but so is this new kid that's, that's on television. She said that, um, she went to a th her boyfriend in, in college, um, cheated on her. And she was with a therapist and the therapist said that she had brought it upon herself and she, she stopped seeing the therapist completely. And then she realized that if someone says to you, um, Hey, you don't, you've got trust issues. That is the one person you shouldn't trust. That is the one person that is doing whatever is wrong to you and She's just, she's just, I mean, she has the girls laughing their heads off in a kind of sweet way. She wants to get married. She wants to have kids. She wants to stay, she wants to find a stay at home husband, but she doesn't want him to be a guy who wants to be a stay at home husband. She wants to find someone who's very talented at his career and then destroy his life, <laughs> make him resent her. That's, I mean, she's so funny. She just reminds me so much of this woman. So Irma is great. Irma also did this thing that is so poignant and I'm going to find it if I can. It's um, what she would do differently and it's beautiful. What she, one thing she would do differently is she would light that scented candle that melted in her attic last summer. She would light it and use it and that's what she would do. So Safari can't find my page of course because I don't know how I'm for some reason, every time I do anything, it just backfires. Okay, let's see if she'll give it to me. I have to just like calm her down and see if that blue line will come across, which it hardly ever does, if I look at it. <laughs> 
it never comes across. If I stop looking at it, sometimes it comes across, but not often enough. Okay, so I'm going to try again. Okay, she said if she had her life to do over, now I'm going to go to this thing called OO oh, Kingdom, and it's not going to work either. Okay, basically she said if she had her life to do over, she would absolutely just she would talk less and listen more. I can't do that one, but I'm glad. I think it's nice that she can. She would have invited more people over for dinner, even though she had carpet stains and her sofa was faded. Now I, I agree with that one. She would have eaten popcorn in the living room, the buttery kind and not thought about it. Cause what difference does it make anyway? She would have gone to bed when she felt sick instead of instead of pretending that the whole world would fall apart without her. Now, I kind of knew that the whole world wouldn't fall apart without me. She was much more amazing as a mom. There would be more I love you's and more I'm sorry's. That's so sweet. When oh this is my favorite one. It makes me cry. When her kids kissed her impetuously, she would have never said later now go wash your wash up for dinner. She would have stopped. She would have scared them to death. She would have stopped and she would have hugged them back and she would have cried and they would have said, oh, Mom, I didn't do it. <laughs> I didn't do it. I mean, honestly, I think some of these is probably a good, good thing that she didn't do them when they were very young. Okay. She also said that she would cherish the relationships that she has, which I'm trying to do now. I really am. And then she said, instead of wishing away the nine months of pregnancy, she would cherish every moment. I, I, I wonder if I would have done that. I don't know. Anyway, good, you know, like, okay, she gets to say what she wants. Oh, I would have done this. I would have taken the time to listen to my grandfather ramble on about his youth. Oh, I'm so sorry. I never did that. I would have loved to have heard all those stories. She would have cried and laughed less while watching television and more while watching life. That's cute. I would have cried and laughed. I mean, I tried to anyway. What else did she say? Okay. She would stop sweating the small stuff, which I definitely gave up years ago. And she would stop worrying about all the things she didn't do. I am trying to stop doing that. And she would start thinking about the things that she used to do. She would light the fireplace. Now I miss having a fireplace and I wish I'd had more fires, even though they make a huge mess. I would have, that is really fun. Really, really fun. And the pink candle sculpted like a rose. She would have used it. I have a candle that Matt gave me every year. I bring it out and I haven't used it. It's he, he had this job, his first job at a drugstore and he got his first paycheck and it was right before Christmas and he spent so much of it on me. He bought me two bottles of a perfume that he liked. This year he did it again because he liked it so much and he knew I would that he got me two bottles. And that very same year he bought me this candle. It's a huge white candle with three wicks coming up. And I just love that he got me the biggest candle in the store. It meant the world to me, but next year I'm going to use it and I'm going to remind him about the story. Irma, you are right. You are right about everything. You are so right. So this girl, I hope this girl is as sweet and as lovely as Irma was for us. You could laugh. You have to laugh. This girl seems very sweet that way. I hope these young girls, 30 year olds, she admits to loving Taylor Swift. She's not, she's not cool. She's not, she's, she's just lovely and sweet and kind. Although at the Emmys last night, she wore this blazer with no shirt underneath it. And you could see her breasts, which reminds me of a story. And I, I almost did it once, you know, when you go out and you are given a name tag on that sticky paper and they slap it on your chest on your right, you know, your right or your left side. Irma asked one time, okay, we'll call this one Irma. What should we call the other one? Which is cute. But I hope this girl stays sweet. I think every generation needs someone adorable that they can laugh with. 
I hope she has children. I hope she's funny. We just, it can't be as serious as they're making it. It can't be. We gotta let it, let it rip. Have some fun. I don't want them to learn that when they're 60. I want these 30 year old girls to learn it when they're 30. That, you know, like Irma said, if somebody is acting like they're a much better parent than you are, and they're talking about you behind your back, they're asking for it. People, you know, and you've got all this stuff on Pinterest and Facebook and Instagram, and everybody is having their pictures taken by fabulous photographers. She doesn't look like she's ever going to do that. And I hope she doesn't. And she looks like she's having fun, which is the greatest thing to look like. And I do believe she is having fun. I looked at a lot of her interviews. It looks like she loves life and she's having fun. That's the hardest thing to enjoy what you've got. So anyway, just wanted to bring Irma Bombeck back and you know, life is full of cherries. What am I doing in the pits? So great. So I'm going to read her book again. I think I need it. I think she's wonderful. And I think she led a wonderful life. Her father was a crane operator, the only crane operator in her town. What a safe job that is. You don't have to worry about anything. They're never going to call anybody else up. There's nobody breathing down your neck. No whippersnapper with a better crane. She had a great life. Her husband was great. Her kids were great. One funny story is her children, the adopted older daughter and the two boys, all got along great. Everybody loved mom. They forgot Mother's Day one year. And she didn't say a word until the end of the day. And then she actually cried. They were so upset. So she was real. She was really, really real. That's what the three kids say. She was always Irma. She felt everything. She did everything. The whole book, every book was about their life. And Irma cried. And she said, nope. The oldest daughter said, nobody forgot Mother's Day ever again. They made a big deal out of it. So anyway, she was a real, real person. And I think this Taylor Tomlinson is too. I hope to God she is. Trying to stay sane. Little humor is a good thing. Never go to a doctor whose plants are dead in the waiting room. That's brilliant. I'll be back. Thanks. Bye-bye.